What's going on? Number one, super egotistical people. We all have egos when it comes to things we're passionate about. But what I'm talking about here are the super egotistical people who think that everyone owes them something and that the world should worship at their feet. The craziest thing about these types of people is that they haven't done anything to be deserving of such a high amount of praise. Anyone can walk around saying they're the best this or the best that, but honestly, it means nothing, especially in this craft that's so subjective. Number two, people who leave right after you play. Playing shows at a local level is all about fostering a community. It's about making contacts and befriending bands. When you're starting out, your biggest fans and cheerleaders are going to be people in other bands because these are usually the only other people who actually go to shows. By leaving right after you play, you're basically saying freak off to everyone else. You want people to watch you play, but you don't want to watch other people? This is the fastest way to never getting invited back to playing a venue again, not to mention the quickest shortcut for taking yourself out of the scene entirely. Number three, people who are in other bands. When you're in a band with people who are in other bands, this usually isn't a great sign. Being in a band with people is like being in a relationship. The side project is like hanging out with a hot side piece. The second someone looks outside of the main project into doing something else, that should be a red flag. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible for people to be in multiple projects, but in certain situations, if someone is spending more time in one project over another, that's usually the project they want to pursue. Actions speak louder than words. Number four, people who don't have their own transportation. This one is pretty obvious. If someone isn't able to get themselves and their own equipment to shows without you going to pick them up, that's asking a lot, especially in an age of ride sharing. With the myriad of challenges facing musicians today, there's no reason to add another easily circumvented issue into the mix. This is the kind of thing that that breeds resentment, the kind of festering, alien, blasting out of a dude's chest kind of resentment. I don't care if you're John freaking Frusciante, I'm not driving 30 minutes to come pick you up and then driving another 30 back to the practice space. And then I gotta drive you home? And then I gotta drive myself home? Number five, people with substance abuse problems. Don't be in bands with people who do drugs. It never ends well. You might turn into a junkie yourself, or your bandmate might never show up for that huge gig. Or they might spend all your band money on their next score, but it's cool, because they're going to get you high all night. Drugs breed negativity. Like attracts like. You could be the nicest person in the world and find yourself in situations you never dreamed of finding yourself in. Trust me, stick to the sex and rock and roll. Save the drugs for after your career tanks and you've got nothing left to live for. It's better to burn out than to fade away anyway. Obviously there's exceptions to all these rules, so leave me stories of your worst or best bandmate experiences in the comments below. This is Mike from 424recording.com. Godspeed, my friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you nerd. And as always, make sure you do something you wanna do today, all right?